What's up, y'all? Got a banger from Peas World. Let's get straight into it. This is some massive breaking news and quite heartbreaking, really. For all the men who were thirsting after Whoopi Goldberg, I hate to break it. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody thirsting after Whoopi Goldberg. To you, but she is now joining the 4B movement. So you guys can go ahead and get. Please, honey. I thought she was already over there. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Give up now because you don't have a chance. <laughs> Devastating news coming live straight out of the Levi Nick show here. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg is off the market. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I really thought I had a chance. She's just a regular working class woman, right? She only makes like eight million a year. That energy to the women who have just joined the 4B movement because they realized post election that every single man is complicit in the culture that just re elected Donald Trump. I'm saying to you as a lesbian, keep that energy. I love it. Because what I'm seeing is that all of you who date men have just seen what lesbians have been saying and have been knowing. Lesbians have- Wait, don't y'all have like the highest divorce rates though? Don't lesbians divorce at like 72%? It's crazy work. Been understanding that men don't like women. Men don't like women. Speak for yourself, honey. We love the ladies around here. We love the ladies around here, boy. And even the ones who voted for Kamala and the ones who are good guys are complicit in the behavior of other ones. So hold on to what you know to be true right now. Hold on to that energy and keep it collectively. If you want to make change in the patriarchy, you have to uphold the boundary. That's the bottom line here. How about new? It's all the buzzwords, patriarchy, uphold the boundaries. Being a man hating lesbian is genuinely just envy. Like, you're not hey, concerning. I don't get it. Like, you're a lesbian. Why are you even? It's like showing up to tennis practice with a baseball bat. <laughs> You ain't even playing the same sport, boo-boo. What are you even tripping about? Why are you mad about something that's got nothing to do with you? <laughs> this ain't none of your business. A lot. None of your business. I've noticed an interesting trend where a concerning amount of black women are getting fired, laid off, or heavily penalized in the workplace ever since. I'll get you penalized. Shots fired! <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. That was horrible. Donald Trump got elected. I always believed that Donald Trump is a symptom, not the cause, which is why it was concerning to me when he won the U.S. elections, because that is just indicative of how people really, really feel deep down and has now emboldened them to be able to say all the things that they want to say and behave in the way that they want to behave. This election for a lot of white people was mainly about pushing back against any progress that we've made in the last 10 years. But I'm realizing what I'm seeing from a lot of the women that I'm mentoring is how this is trickling down. What, what, what is up with these 20 something year old women mentoring? You don't even have enough life experience to mentor an ant, a flea. You couldn't mentor a dog to take a crap. You have no life experience. This is what I don't get. Like these 22, 23 year old gurus, mentor, life coaches. You haven't even lived a life. How do you know how to coach somebody? Ever since literally the day after Donald Trump won, how they've now been put on pips. They've been made sort of a target in the workplace. So everyone just be safe. I know the dating scene sucks, but so does getting hurt in an accident. Have you ever found yourself involved in a personal injury case? As an image consultant, I meet a lot of clients who are actually recovering from all sorts of injuries, from car accidents to workplace injuries. And I was actually surprised to see at how many people lose their personal injury cases, which is why I want to talk about Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. They specialize in a wide variety of personal injury cases, and they've won thousands of big cases. And if you do end up working with them, they're going to fight for the money that you deserve. Just recently, Morgan & Morgan solidified verdicts in Florida for $12 million and $26 million in Philly. That's up to 40 times the highest insurance offer. And I'm telling you, your case could be worth millions. And the best part is, it's all free unless you win your case. Now, if you've also been the victim of a personal injury or a serious accident, you can visit www.forthepeople.com slash Levi, found in the description below, where you can start your free claim today. Mom disowned me because I voted for Trump and he won. It's not the first time she disowned me, so like, that's why I'm laughing. If you're going through something like that. It's not the first time she's disowned you, huh? What? 
don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'll be your mom. No, because if you are willing to cut off family, friends, anybody in your own personal life whose views don't perfectly align with yours, you're the problem right now. I completely agree, bro. It's okay to agree to disagree. We don't have to see eye to eye on everything, bro. I like wearing the color black. You might wear like wearing the color blue. I don't care. Or red. I like I like a quiff haircut with a mid fade. With my beard nice and tight. You might like shaving your face. I'm cool with it. I'm cool I'm cool with that. You might like wearing loafers. I might like wearing tennis shoes. I don't care. You're the problem right now, and I guarantee that kind of behavior will cause more of a divide in your own life than this election ever will. Okay? It's preach. Your true colors are showing. I opened up Facebook this morning to what so room? many posts saying, if you voted for this person, I don't care who you are, go ahead and unfriend me. I love it. I'm going to let the trash take itself out. Okay. Okay. Girl. I do not care who you voted for, but I do care how you're treating people who voted differently than you. And well, the left is supposed to be the most understanding. They're supposed to be the most open-minded, understanding, and empathetic. But as soon as it's somebody that don't vote like them, they're like, You're the devil! You're the devil! <laughs> that's what's so crazy to me. What happened to all that empathy and understanding? And that, that's what it really boils down to. I have close friends in my life who I know voted differently than me. And I'm not unfriending anybody because of the way they voted. But I yeah, will okay. be unfriending anybody who is like openly bashing and blocking their own gram on the Facebook comments. Because that, that is telling me all I need to know about you as a person. If you're heartbroken because friends and family have cut you off because of the election and the way you voted, just know your pain and confusion is a direct proportion to the pain and confusion they've experienced over the last 10 years that you chose to ignore. I want to get you guys this. Bro, what? Chat, let me know. Do you guys care? Like, if somebody voted different than you or has a different opinion, do you, like, cut them off entirely? I'm all about, like, being friends with people that don't agree with you entirely. And I think this right here is a recipe for disaster if you're only looking for yes men or yes women, people that just align with your beliefs in every single way. It's just, it can be really bad. You need, you need people that are free thinkers that oppose your ideologies. It forces you to grow and think outside the box. Loki, you want some uh, you want some beef lung? That's what we got on the menu today. Look at him licking his chops, boy. Want some beef lung? Free. Sit. Wait. Free. Free. He's tired. We went on a run this morning. You boys trying to get trying to lose a couple of pounds. I was uh traveling a little bit these past few weeks and uh got a little big back there. <laughs> gotta lose some lbs bro i gained about five pounds i was like oh my lord i gotta get i gotta i gotta start running but he doesn't run usually he's a house dog he just chills at the crib and eats beef jerky so he was like dad why are we running so he's tired this morning a long time ago this girl put up a post on instagram and she asked women do you ever feel like when you're crossing the street um men purposely try to hit you with their cars and there were a bunch of women in the comments being like yes oh Stupid. my god i thought i was going crazy and in the comments, uh, women were basically saying that they've experienced men breaking fast or stopping really short or inching up. And she was like, you would look at them in the car and they would almost give the vibe of like, I want to hit you with my car. And a bunch of women were just kind of like, I thought. Bro, it, it, so everybody's played that game. It's like 10 points. <laughs> <laughs> it's just this victim mindset, bro. You think everything's about you. How narcissistic and egotistic do you have to be to think every person driving on the road that's trying to stop at a certain point is trying to hit you? Like, come on, dude. thought I was just imagining it or you just, are. you know, just not just being kind of like out of my mind about it. But now I feel so seen. And I think about that a lot. Do you feel heard? <laughs> do you feel seen? I feel like Mr. Bean. Stupid. <laughs> That was horrible. Again, I'm gonna say until I'm blue. I, I just I don't I don't understand that. To me, is what what in the H E double hockey sticks is that, bro? Who comes up with this stuff? The victim Olympics, man. So it blows my mind how a lot of y'all females. I love this chick. She's great. You envy the lifestyle of the stay at home girlfriend. You envy the women that live off pretty privilege. Cause let's be real, y'all be out here trying to emulate that lifestyle by begging. 
but y'all don't understand that nothing in life is free just like you go to work and you submit to your boss and you're not going to tell your boss what you're not going to do and how you're not doing this and coming up with a rosa park speech about what you're not going to do the same thing applies when your lifestyle is funded by men nothing in life is free if you want a soft life if you want to be a stay-at-home girlfriend if you want to get flued out then you're going to stroke a man's ego you're going to compete with other women. You're going to cook, you're going to clean, you're going to provide some type of service, some type of labor. You're going to appeal to the male gaze. You're going to do something. Nothing in life is free. So if you want to be an independent boss and pay all your bills by yourself and take care of your five kids by yourself, then you can do that. But stop Say trying to recruit <laughs> other women to do that with you. It's some women who want to be taken care of. It's some women who want a soft life. It's some women who want to just sit back and chill and be a woman. You go be a boss and do all that by yourself. Everybody don't have to do that with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? It's so weird to me. I love it. She's so based. This is one thing I don't get right now with modern women is that they would rather submit to their boss as opposed to submit to their man. They would rather pull out all the stops for the boss. Yeah, I'll show up early, boss. I'll stay late, boss. I'll do this for you, boss. I'll, I'll do this for you. I'll, 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 you know, this, that, and the third. I'll go to all these links. But when it comes to a man, you won't even cook him a meal. You won't make him a home-cooked meal. You won't rub his feet after work. You won't rub his back. You won't tell him he's great. You won't put on his favorite TV show, get him a cold beer, and then shh. You won't even do that. That's crazy work. And it's all because they think it's they're getting the bag at work. Well, I'm getting paid at work. Isn't love supposed to be worth more than money? If it's all about money, why don't you go be somebody's maid? Go be a prosy for all I care. It's just crazy work to me. These women will really go out there and submit more to their boss than they will the, uh, than they will their loved one. It's nuts. For the next four years, white women need to focus on white women. Like, there's really no easy way to say it. For the next four years, what's up with all the race wars? I don't I don't get this, dude. White women need to be in community with white women. White women need to find sisterhood with white women. Isn't that like segregation though? White women need to cross party lines and save their community from the shackles that are misogyny, misinformation, and quite frankly, make-believe. Black women- Where's the patriarchy at? Where's that hit word? Women are one band, one sound. We understand the assignment and we deliver the assignment flawlessly. Not to mention Jewish women are quite literally right behind us. One band, one sound. They understand the assignment and they will deliver the assignment. And we're not getting that exact same energy from white women. Did anybody else miss the syllabus? <laughs> what in the, what's the assignment? Like it is exhausting. Thank you so much for your allyship. Thank you for your allyship. But for the next four years, your white conservative sisters need your allyship. White women need to start talking about politics. White women need to start calling each other out because 45% is not cutting it. It's actually inexcusable. So for the next four years, white women are gonna focus on white women. I think that is a good plan of action. Why do white women- I don't even, I don't even know what that whole clip was all about. What are you talking about? Focus on white women. What? It's just- it just the, the stuff that people focus on. I'm like, bro, when I when I get done making these videos, I'm literally spending time with Casper and Loki. We're not licking grundles. Thank you, sir. We're on camera. Okay? Can we keep it PG while we're in here, dude? Thank you. It's just, I don't even have the mental fortitude to go back and forth and have the mental gymnastics to say, I'm going to think about this and think about how I'm being oppressed and this, that, and the third. Dude, I just want to chill with my family, chill with my dog, and play some video games, bro. Tell me why all the most amazing, attractive, beautiful, loving women that I know are all single right now. Mm. And I just saw a statistic that said by- Because you're entitled. 20, 30, 45% of women are going to be single. Mm. And they didn't say men, too. They said women because they're trying to highlight the fact that we're, like, taking our- uh, Shorty was so close. Shorty was so close. <laughs> you know how delusional you got to be to sit up here and realize- to sit up here and realize that most women are going to be old and, and, and single- by 20, what's he say, 2030? Or I forgot what number that was. 45% of women are going to be single. And it didn't say guys, but it said women because we're taking our power back. Is that, that's, that's the conclusion you reached the by the fact that 45% of American women are going to be single? Yeah, that's, that's taking your power back? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. By 2030? That's the conclusion you reached. That you were taking your power back. You know how delusional you gotta be to think that you're taking your power back by being old and single. You're crazy. And I'm not up here, up here woman hating or nothing. It's just like be 
for real. Most women are going to be single because they're harlots and bed wenches. That's why. Most women harlots and bed wenches. <laughs> <laughs> this man's bringing out these Skyrim terms. Women are going to be single because they can't handle commitment. And it's not the men because the men aren't the issue. Let me tell you how I know the men aren't the issue. Because it says the men aren't the issue. Here's the thing. Most women are going to be single but not men. Okay, let me explain it to you. And I hate using these talking points because I sound like them. But look, here's the thing, right? Most women go after a small minority of men. You 95% of the women go for the top 5% of the men, yeah. Any street interview. You watch any street interview. What are the woman's height requirements? Six, six foot, six one, six two, mm -hmm. six three, all the way up to six six or six seven. Okay, so you want one percent or less of the population, yep. but you're ninety nine percent of the hoes. <laughs> Do math. Do math. You're ninety nine percent of the hoes, but you want less than one percent of the population. All y'all want the same men, right? This is why women think some men are, are hoes, right? Because you're all messing with the same one. Y'all are all mm -hmm. messing with the same one. Most, okay, girls think that having like 30 plus bodies is normal, right? Because y'all are all messing with the same men. So, of course, that man's going to have 30 plus bodies. Y'all are all messing with the same dude. So, he's hitting all of y'all. But most men will never touch 30 bodies in their life, let alone 10, let alone 5. So true, though. You harlots are the only ones touching 30 bodies. Do your thing. I'm not hating on you. You know, do whatever you want. But you harlots are the only ones touching 30 bodies. 30? 30 bodies is devious work, brother. She said, we're taking our power back. No, you're being delusional. And then you refuse to take any type of, any type of accountability. Okay. Any type of accountability. You just... Like, what is it like to live in a world where accountability is lost on you? Like, you really can't sit down. Well, what I don't realize is women will go out there and have 300 arguments and be like, so you were right on every single argument? You are, you're 300 and O. Oh, yeah? You're the Floyd Mayweather of, of arguments with men. Like, come on, stop it, bro. Look inwards and think, dang, maybe I'm the problem. Oh, no, never. Like, me right i consider myself to be a loving dude but even i can look within myself and see my issues of why relationships don't work well and the reason that is is because men we regulate this stuff when as a man you don't get the results you want you think mm, common denominator uh, common denominator's me it's my fault let me take ownership of that because as soon as you give up accountability and you say nothing's my fault you play the victim and then you you have no power because everything that happens to you is is by somebody else's fruition or somebody else's choices. You lose all your power. That's why you got to take accountability because you can take you can take all your power back and say, you know what? It's my fault. I'm gonna learn and grow from this. Well, my relationships don't work, right? I can sit down and realize when I've been selfish, when I've been mean, when when I haven't been um, um, considerate to others' uh, feelings. So I change. I can, I can realize where I've messed up. So I change. Y'all see. Actually, y'all mess up and somehow flip it on whoever you were messing with, and it was all their fault. So it's all a sign. It's all a sense and sign of uh, just a low. It's a low. Not I wouldn't say low sign of intelligence. I had the word on me. Oh, it's just it's just a fragile ego, bro. A lot of these women have very fragile egos. That's why I say women grow old; they never grow up. And women are children, dude. I told Cass this morning. I was like, women are children. She's like, yeah, you're right. There's just some things they do that they act like a child. You think you're perfect and you never have to change. When I mess up in a relationship, I sit down, I reflect, I realize what I did wrong, and I do better next time. Y'all mess up. Don't even acknowledge that you messed up. Blame it on them and then don't change and then just run around bitter. Here's a problem, really? right? My man is preaching. My man is preaching. I mean, it's so right, though. Like... And this is, this is advice for just all the men out there. Like, guys, if you're not happy with what's going on in any of your relationships, take a step back and think, what am I doing wrong? And what am I doing to get the results I'm getting out of relationships? It's a stoic philosophy. You can only control how you react. Say it again for the ones in the back. You can only control how you react. So when things happen in your life, always remember you have complete control over how you react on that situation. Something bad happens, take a breath, take a second, then react. Don't react emotionally. Try to react rationally and logically. It's it's just as simple as that, dude. You if you can take that one philosophy from Stoicism, from Marcus Aurelius's meditation, you take that just that one, your life will be so much better, dude. So much better. And then when you're with your girl, try to speak less and listen more. That's why it's two ears, one mouth. That's another Stoic one. Two ears, one mouth, dude. Listen, you will learn so much about people and so much about a woman if you just listen to them 
and then wait to speak. Always try to be the last one to speak. People will take you so much more serious, so much more serious. I wish I would have learned this when I was younger because when I got older, I finally figured it out. And now when I spend time with people, I try to speak less and listen more. But when I was younger, dude, I was always like just talking all the time. I wanted people to understand me. But there's another quote um, that I came up with. It's just seek to understand before being understood. Seek to understand your environment, the surroundings, the people you're around, the environment, whatever, whatever new, you know, scenario you're in, try to understand what's going on and then let them understand you. Seek to understand before being understood. That's a big one. Loki, did you have a good time today? Bro, he's so tired, bro. He's so tired. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the two ebooks, The Four Pillars of Personality and The Four Steps of Style that make you irresistible to women and respected by men. I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.